sentados. Oh. Oh, I've been asleep. Oh. I was so comfy in my bed. I. Oh, excuse me. I just. Oh, forgot it was Saturday club. Sorry, one moment. There's something in my bed. Oh, it's just a, a goat, a toy goat. I'm not sure why there's a toy goat in my bed, but there's just a goat in my bed. As I was saying, I've, I've had a very busy week and... Sorry, there's, oh look, there's something else in there. It's a squishy... Oh, smells nice. A lavender ball. What's that doing in my bed? I don't know. As I was saying, it's been a very, a very busy week. Sorry, there's something else there. What's that? Why are my keys in my bed? Oh dear, I don't know. Oh, there's something pushing at my foot. A hairbrush. Well. I probably could do with brushing my hair, but I don't know why it's in my bed. Oh dear. Next you'll be... Two things. Scissors and a seashell. Oh, I don't know what's happening boys and girls. I mean... The... And an ornamental sheep. This is getting beyond a joke. Well, as I was saying, boys and girls, sorry, something right down the bottom. A rubber duck. I think that's everything. I'm just going to check one more time. Yeah, there's, there's definitely nothing else in my bed, but why are all those things in my bed? What's happening? Why am I doing Saturday Club from my bed? Well, you'll have to carry on listening to find out, but I'm going to be sensible now. Get out of bed. Take off my dressing gown. And turn the camera round. Oh, there we go. That's better. That's more like it. So, I had some very strange things in my bed, and if you want to find out why I've got those things in my bed, you'll have to listen later on. So, I wonder who is listening today. I wonder who's here watching in Saturday Club, coming from my bedroom. I wonder who's listening. I wonder if Josiah and Reuben and Joel are listening. I've got your pictures, Josiah and Reuben. And I hear that, Josiah, you really liked what we were doing in the craft this week. This one's Reuben's. And I think that they did the complicated way with the oil because I can see that there was oil on the paper and there's a lovely very good colouring of the plague of blood well done Reuben and then this one's Josiah Josiah's really been careful to fill the whole river with that blood so well done boys with the plague of blood it was a horrible thing that happened to the Egyptians wasn't it and then we've got Kate's and I think Kate used crayons and colouring pencils on hers. And I really like the pink pyramid. I'd go to a country where there was a pink pyramid. So well done, Kate. And then this one is Joffio's. And I think that Joffio might have used wax crayons. Or maybe even oil pastels to get, his, to get the red for his river of blood. So well done, Joffio. Those are some really good crafts that you've done. Oh, oh dear, my tea's gone cold.
Oh well, I will not be able to have a cup of tea while I'm doing Saturday Club today. I hope I don't have a sore throat because I forgot to bring a drink up with me. But uh, yes, yeah, so I wonder how your week's been. My week's been very busy, but I've been learning lots of new things. I've been teaching myself how to do new things on the computer. And I managed to do some things yesterday that I was really, really pleased with. So I went to bed feeling quite tired, but really happy because I'd learned how to do something new now um <coughs> excuse me it's good when we can learn new things and i hope you th those of you who are going to school are still enjoy and are enjoying learning new things at school and uh it must be nearly time for the school holidays now so uh yes i hope that you're um looking forward to your holidays sorry i've got to move my camera there we are, that's better. I hope that you're looking forward to your holidays. I just realised that you couldn't read the word on my wall. It says create, because you know I like to make things and there's a list of all of the things that I like to make. And I had a busy week. I went to see my brother and my sister-in-law and um, we, met, we decorated a table because they're going to have a baby and we decorated a table for the baby's room. So that's what I did this week. So... Um, that I got very creative this week. And this is my little craft table where I like to make all sorts of things. So this, you've got a view into a different view of my house. So now I've done Saturday Club from my study and from my living room and from my bedroom. So unless I do it from the kitchen or the bathroom, there's nowhere left for you to see in my house. So it's nearly time for us to start. And uh, I hope that you're looking forward to learning more about Moses and more about the plagues and maybe finding out why I did Saturday Club from my bed and why there are all of those strange things in my bed this morning. So we're going to start off now by praying. So let's put our hands together and close our eyes and pray to God. Dear God, thank you that you have kept us safe this week. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the wonderful stories we find in the Bible. Please be with us in Saturday Club. Please help us to understand the story today and help us to listen to it and learn from it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now we're going to start off by singing and the song that we sing at the beginning is My God is so big. So we're going to sing My God is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do are you ready my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do the rivers are his the mountains are his the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And remember that word handiwork, that means that God made the stars and God made everything because God is our creator. And to create something means to make something. So we're going to start off by learning our memory verse. And do you remember we're learning a psalm, which is a song in the Bible. And this is a psalm that King David wrote. And it's Psalm 23. Psalm 23. So I wonder whether you can remember the verse that we learnt last week. And I'll give you a clue. We need to get our fingers in an L like this. An L because the second word is Lord. It's the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And here it is on your sheep. I hope you're keeping your sheep. Maybe you can stick them up on your wall or something. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So shall we say that again? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's got a nice rhythm to it, hasn't it? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now we're going to learn two sentences today. The first one is, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. So we're going to lie our hands down 
and then we're going to go green pastures so he maketh me to lie down in green pastures can you do that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures so that's the first part of the sentence it's a long sentence and then the second part of the sentence is he leadeth me beside the still waters he leadeth me beside the still waters so he leadeth me beside the still waters it's waving your three fingers like like water he leadeth me beside the still waters so it's he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters and that's talking about how God it's it's talking about God as if he's a shepherd looking after sheep so the sheep they like they they need to have lots of green pastures green grass to eat and they like to drink from still flat water they don't like to drink from babbling streams or from rushing waters they like still flat water but good water that they can drink from so the whole of the verse we're learning today is he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters let's see if we can do the whole thing from the beginning the look the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters and that's our hands moving as if God is leading us beside still waters so we're going to carry on learning that psalm this week and if you want to, to maybe you can keep all of the the sheep shapes to help you learn that psalm so at the start of Saturday Club this morning I was in my bed and I was pretending to be fast asleep and I found all sorts of strange things in my bed. I wonder if you can remember what I found. So, let me see. There was something that I really, really needed because I kept on diving under the covers and my hair was all messy. Can you remember what it was that I found in my bed? I'll give you a clue. I'll move it up very slowly. What is it? It was a hairbrush. I found a hairbrush in my bed. Let's see if you can remember what else I found. There was something that we'll be needing to use in our craft this week. Something that we'll be needing to use. I wonder if I make a noise with them, if you can hear the noise. Oh. What did I find? Let's have it coming up from the bottom of the screen. I found a pair of scissors, a pair of scissors in my bed, which really isn't safe. They could have chopped a hole in my pyjamas. And then there was something that normally you find at the beach. Can you remember what it was? It's coming up. It was a seashell. I found a seashell in my bed. And then, oh, there was something that normally you'd see on a windowsill or on a shelf to make your house look beautiful. And it's got to do with our memory verse. Can you remember what it was? I'll give you a clue. The real life one goes, bah, bah. I found an ornamental sheep in my bed. An ornamental sheep. I'll move that to the camera so you can see him a bit closer. A white sheep in my bed. And then there was something that smelt nice and it's actually something that I made. It smelt of lavender. Can you remember what it was? It was a scented, a scented lavender crochet ball, which is bright yellow and that goes on my windowsill as well. And then there was something I might need to get into places, but you don't normally need it to get into bed. They make a noise too. Can you remember what they were? Some keys. It was the keys. It was actually the keys to the chapel. I wonder how they got in my bed. And then 
There was something that normally you find in the bathroom or in the sh to float in your bath. And it goes quack, 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 quack. It was a rubber ducky. A pink rubber ducky. I'm going to put that there because it's a bit wet. And last of all, can you remember, boys and girls, what I found in my bed, which is maybe a bit more normal? It was a cuddly toy. I found a cuddly toy in my bed. A toy goat. I said it was a goat, but I think actually it's a chamois. All of those things that I found in my bed, and you wouldn't expect to find any of them in your bed. Now, how did they get there? Well, I live on my own. So the answer is that I put them in my bed. But in our story today, we're going to learn about how God sent some very, very strange things into the Egyptians' homes. And they were even in their beds. But before we do that, we're going to sing. And we're going to sing the song that we have been learning. Good news, good news, Christ died for me. Good news, good news, if I believe. Good news, good news, I'm saved eternally. That's wonderful. Extra good news. So sit, sit up straight. <coughs> Are you ready? Good news, good news, Christ died for me. Good news, good news, if I believe. Good news, good news, I'm saved eternally. That's wonderful. Extra good news. Do you know, I don't think you said extra quite loud enough. I think we need some louder extras. Are you ready? Good news, good news, Christ died for me. Good news, good news, if I believe. Good news, good news, I'm saved eternally. That's wonderful, extra good news. That's better and it really is good news that Jesus died for us so that if we believe in him we can forgiven, be forgiven for all of the wrong things we do and the times we break God's good laws and we can go to be with him in heaven when we die. Now, in Saturday Club, where do all of our stories come from? Do they come out of my head? No. Do they come from a book of fairy tales? No. They come from the Bible. Can you remember how many books there are in the Bible? I'll give you a clue. How many books are there in the Bible? All of these. There are 66 books in the Bible, but they tell one big story, the story of God's plan to save Jesus. And today's story comes from the second book of the Bible, from Exodus. And I'm going to read part of that story to you now. And the good thing about being in my bedroom is that my Bible is definitely here because that's where I keep it. So I'm going to read part of that story to you from the Bible, from the book of Exodus, chapter 8 and verses 1 to 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both upon thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. Now in Saturday Club, we're learning about the book of Exodus. And in the book of Exodus, God has made a picture for us in the Bible. And it's a picture of God's plan to save sinners. And remember... The Israelites were slaves in Egypt and they were being very cruelly treated. But God had a plan to rescue them 
And as we're learning about God's plan to rescue the Israelites, we're learning about God's plan to rescue us from our sins. Now God had sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh with a message. Let my people go. But Pharaoh had a hard heart. He wouldn't listen to God. He kept on saying no. So God had started doing wonderful but frightening things in Egypt, which would show to Pharaoh and all the Egyptians that he is God. And we call them the 10 plagues of Egypt. And last week we learnt about the first plague, the plague of blood. And do you remember? All of the water in Egypt turned to blood and the fish died and the river stank. Now in our Bible reading, we learnt that God sent Moses and Aaron back to Pharaoh again with the same message, let my people go. And this time God warned Pharaoh that if he didn't let the Israelites go, he would send frogs from out of the river and all over Egypt, in the houses, in the bedrooms, in the beds, into the ovens, into the bowls where the Egyptians made their bread. Everywhere there would be frogs. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen to God. He had a hard heart. So he said, no. So God told Moses to tell Aaron to stretch out his rod over the streams, rivers and ponds. And frogs came out of the water and covered the whole of Egypt. And there were frogs in people's homes, in people's beds, in the places where they tried to cook food, in the places where they washed themselves. Everywhere there were so many frogs. But Pharaoh's magicians did the same thing. Now remember, they made the frogs came out of the water, but they didn't do this with God's power, but with the power of Satan, God's enemy. Now, when Pharaoh's magicians made the water turn into blood, just like God had done, Pharaoh hardened his heart and he wouldn't listen. But this time something a bit different happened. Pharaoh must have started to realise that God is powerful because he called Moses and Aaron and he said to Moses, ask God to take away these frogs and I will let the Israelites go. Now Moses wanted Pharaoh to be very sure that it was God who had taken away the frogs. So Moses said to Pharaoh, when shall I ask God to take the frogs away? You decide. Pharaoh said, tomorrow. So Moses said, it will happen tomorrow so that you know that there is no one like God. God will take all of the frogs away and they'll just be left in the river where they belong. So Moses and Aaron went away and Moses prayed and God did just as Moses had said. He made all of the frogs die so that the only frogs left were the ones in the whole river. The Egyptians swept the dead frogs up into huge heaps and the whole of Egypt stank a dead frog. Now, when Pharaoh saw that the frogs were dead, he hardened his heart and he would not let the Israelites go just as God had said. Even though God had taken the frogs away, Pharaoh wouldn't let the Israelites go. God had helped him, but Pharaoh still wouldn't listen to God. Now the stories in Egypt about the plagues of Egypt, take, the stories in Exodus about the plagues of Egypt teach us a very important lesson. Pharaoh had been warned by God to let the Israelites go. God had said that if he didn't let the Israelites go, he would make wonderful but frightening things happen in Egypt. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen. 
he had a hard heart. And today we learnt that even though Pharaoh wanted God's help, when he had a problem with the frogs, when that problem with the frogs went away, Pharaoh wanted nothing to do with God. God sent messages to us in the Bible. He tells us that we are sinners who have broken his good laws. He warns us that Jesus will one day come back and our sins will be punished. But there is a rescue plan. God promises that if we go to God, go to him and ask him to forgive us because Jesus died on the cross for us, then he will forgive us and bring us to heaven to live with him forever. And we need to listen to God's message. We must be careful not to have a hard heart like Pharaoh did. We must come to come Jesus before it is too late. Some people think that they can just ask God for help when they have a problem and then ignore God again when the problem goes away. That's what Pharaoh did. But the Bible tells us that God wants us to obey him and follow him all the time. So we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to help us do that. So let's put our hands together and close our eyes. Dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the messages in your word. Thank you for your promise that if we come to you and ask you to forgive us because Jesus died on the cross, you will forgive us. Help us to come to you and ask you to forgive us. Help us not just to come to you when we have a problem, but to follow you all the time. In Jesus' name, Amen. I just want to say hello to Lockman, who I can see is watching. Hello, Lockman. I hope you're enjoying it. Now, we've got a craft to do. And... Actually, before we do a craft, I'm going to give you a quiz because we haven't used our yes, no card yet today. So I'm going to give you a quick quiz and you need your yes card and your no card. So let's see how much you can remember. Did God say, did Pharaoh, let me, no, nope, change my mind. God sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh with a warning that the frogs would come unless he let the Israelites go. Did Pharaoh listen to God's warning? No. Or yes. Did Pharaoh listen to God's warning? Yes or no? No. Pharaoh didn't listen to God's warning. He had a hard heart. Did the frogs cover the whole land of Egypt? even in the bedrooms and in the kitchens and in the ovens and in the mixing bowls. Were the frogs over the whole land of Egypt? Yes or no? What do you think? Yes, the frogs went over the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh asked for God's help to get rid of the frogs. Did God help him? Did God help Pharaoh? Yes or no? What do you think? It's yes! God was so kind he helped Pharaoh even though Pharaoh wasn't listening to him. After God had helped Pharaoh, did Pharaoh listen to God and let the Israelites go? Yes or no? Which one is it? No, Pharaoh still didn't listen to God and still wouldn't let the Israelites go. So, we've got something to do at home and it's to make some frogs. Now, I've just made a circle of four, but if you were keen, you could make more and make a little plague of frogs on your kitchen table. And I'm going to show you how to make them. So you should have a sheet here. It's a bit hard to see. It's got half a frog and then there's a big square. And the first thing you need to do is cut out the whole, not, sorry, not cut out, is you need to colour in all of the big square in green. Can you see that? I've covered all of the big square in green. 
you could paint it, you could use crayons, you could use pens and when you've coloured it in green then you need to cut it out or you need to ask a grown-up to cut it out for you. I'm going to cut out all of my big square with my big scissors. you need to do is to fold your square first of all you need to fold it in half this way so I'm going to fold my square in half this way and then on one side you'll have a plain plane and on the other side you'll have that half frog so you need to fold it in half so that the half frog is on the top So now I've made a little square and then you need to knit, fold a little square in half so the half frog is on the top but to make a triangle and there are dotted lines to show you where to fold. So now on one side we've got a very faint frog and on the other side we've got our half frog and then you need to cut out your half frog but don't cut along the joins that join the front leg up. So cut around its bottom and the back leg. And then around the foot, back foot and the back leg again, both sides of the back leg. Be careful not to cut the foot off. And around its tummy and around its front leg Oops. and then around the other side of the front leg and around the head and the nose so that it looks like that and then if you open it up you should, if I've done this right, there we go, have a circle of frogs. And then what you can do is you can get a pen and you can give them all eyes because at the moment just one of the frogs has an eye. So you can make a plague of frogs. So that's your craft for you to do. And then if you're older, there's a worksheet for you to do too. So we've got a crossword all about the plague of frogs with questions, with missing words. And then you need to fill in the missing words in the crossword. And then on the back, there's a think box and it says, why do you think Pharaoh asked Moses to pray to God to take the frogs away? And then underneath, there's our memory verse. And this is the memory verse where you need to look at the gaps here and fill in the letters. So here, on this gap here, I've got one, two, three, and I've got three letters. I've got an M, an H and a P. So I need to work out which letter goes in which gap. So I know that the first word of our memory verse is he. So I would cross out the H and put an H in there. And then maybe leave the M and the P for when I get to the next word. And then I go on to the next letter. And there are another three and there's an E, an A and an E. And I know that he has got an E on the end. So I put an E in there and cross out one of the E's. And going along all of there until you can discover the memory verse. And maybe if you can remember where it is in the Bible, you can look it up. So those are the crafts. So last thing, I'm going to get my board, the other side of our whiteboard, and I'm going to stick on a frog for the plague of frogs. So there we go. That was the plague we learned about this week. So thank you very much for joining me, boys and girls. 
I hope you enjoyed it and mums and dads and I'll see you all next Saturday morning at half past nine. Bye bye.